Today we're going to be talking about creeping trends and stop hunts. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. It's the weekend. We had what I consider to be probably one of the best trading weeks in the last several months. Uh, this week we had almost every single day a very strong minimum of 50 pip move in at least one of the three sessions and on some of the days every session. A lot of great questions. Today we're going to be covering a few questions that have come up. We're going to review the material. We're going to go through the simple steps again. We're going to talk about median price and we're going to talk about creeping trends and stop hunts. So years ago, one of my mentors, Bill McLaren, who several traders may have heard of, 40 year plus Wall Street veteran, taught me about creeping trends. Creeping trends will often end in one of two ways. They will end by capitulating in the direction of the creep. So it could be a creeping trend up and blow off in the direction of the creeping trend, or they can con contract into a squeeze pattern and reverse and blow off in the opposite direction. In either case, both of those can be considered stop hunts or uh, for a, in, in majority of cases, they usually are going after the money, whether it's with the trend or against the trend. But we talk about this because we're going to review the concept of price being in the box. So again, a lot of questions about the box video that I talked about a few weeks ago. And we're going to review the charts from the week and go over that concept because that's what I use each and every day to know when I go into a session, are we working the high, are we putting a high of the day in place for a sell setup, or are we working into the low for a buy setup? We saw an incredibly great W uh, buy low formation on the pound Oz this week. We're going to talk about some of the opportunities that presented on the other pound cross pairs. So let's get into it. Creeping trends versus stop hunts. So there's a, there's a difference between three pushes and a one, two, three, which we're going to talk about as well. The three pushes will evolve typically over two to three hours, sometimes shorter, sometimes a bit longer, but we'll see that sometimes as we head into a session. If the market is moving, we now may move into the, tw the next 12 candle window and they may work in that 12 candle window forming three pushes which we saw on Thursday on a few of the pairs where the market moved or actually Friday where the market moved early in Asia only to form a three push pattern for a stop hunt back in the other direction but we also saw a great um, three push pattern on the pound Aussie working the low working the low working the low from the gap time after the Asian high low in three pushes and again timings are everything for the reversal and the, the big move back in the other direction, which brings us back to the concept of constantly reviewing. When I go to the screen each session, I want to know which trader is in the money, whether it's from the previous session. So if we're heading into the Asian session, I want to know, is there somebody who's, who's short from the US close? We saw a great setup on gold heading into Asia on Friday. They worked the low in three pushes from the US uh, sell high and then boom right off the bat they went up 50 pips to stop hunt the trader who's at, uh, in the market in the money at break even. Who is in the money? So as, as, as the week evolves constantly going back and forth between sessions stopping out traders either at break even or for a loss which again reinforces the concept that nobody gets a free lunch learn to take a profit. Every session on Thursday I, I was on the screen for a total of four hours and I took 140 pips out of the market first hour, first hour, first hour. So some of those trades continued obviously into the second hour or I entered in towards the end of the first hour into the second hour but I was looking for the move from number to number stop on the stop hunt trade and when I get my 50 pips, I'm taking that out. Now some of those trades move more than 50 pips. There was trades where I took, I took a 40 pip trade on Thursday heading into the US session and watched it move 75 pips in the other direction. But my golden rule is once I get the pips, I shut the screen down, 
I'm not trying to catch every move. I'm looking for the scalable setups, and once I get my pips, I don't want to give them back. Creeping trends. We'll talk about median price, and we'll expand on the creeping trend. When the market is starting into a session. We might be at 75, we might be at zero, we might be at 25, we could be anywhere. But typically as soon as the session starts, they will move the market in that first half an hour at least 25 pips. And they be, may be setting up a low of the day for that session, working it in three pushes, coming back, and they might even go in that second half an hour or that second hour and set a high of the day. Now we may still have our high of the day and our low of the day from the previous day intact and the current day. But the timing window now establishes a high and a low and then whether or not we're going to work back into one for a sell high setup or a buy low setup going the other way. But median price will often be where the market starts from. So if we start from here, and this applies, you can look at Asia, you can look at London, you can look at New York. When they start, they will often move the market a minimum of 25 pips away from that median price area. Now if we were up high at the high of the day, high of the week, heading into the session, we actually could form a peak formation heading right into the session open for a sell high or a buy low setup because we may have already had three legs of movement heading into that open. But if on a normal day we open up the market, it might be, again, it doesn't have to be double zeros, but the major round numbers are double zeros and fifties. Where the market opens up, they will move the market anywhere into that first 25 pip box. They may not even get to the 25 pip box. But I want you to understand the concept that if that's medium price, they're going to be working it, taking trade. Some traders are going to go short, they're going to get caught, and they might even take this up another 25 above the median price. So now traders that have sold down low are 50 pips underwater. 30 to 50 pips. Might be 40, might be 35, might be 50. But when they take them down low and they come back up above median price, kind of like a sine wave, okay? If you're getting filled in here, long or short so if you're if you're caught inside unless you're with the direction of the move chances are your risk is now outside whereas we want to know if we're in a buy day that possibly they're going to come 25 pip back, pips back into the trend before they resume that up move now i receive a ton of great feedback about the whiteboard and i receive a lot of feedback from people who don't like it, it's too confusing. Here's my message to you. Listen to what I'm telling you. Don't worry about this. Go to your own charts. Do your own homework. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm not here to try and convince you of anything. I'm here to give you some facts that will help you earn some money. So take that information and apply it to your own charts, whether it's TradingView, MetaTrader 4. I use MT4. I'm going to be straight up honest. I'm not interested in going and learning new software and everything. I do all my notes on my MT4. I do everything on MT4. It's simple. I screenshot it. I put it in my catalog. That's it. I'm not interested in doing other things. I'm not interested in changing my timings, my instruments. I have a, I have a system that works. It's really simple. I don't want to add more stuff. I'm not into that. Take it and apply it to your material. Take the information and use it to your advantage. If you're not profitable, if you're not consistent, take what I'm saying, use it, use the gold nuggets in there that I've taken from other traders. I'm standing on their shoulders and use it to your advantage. If you don't like my whiteboard, that's okay, make your own notes. If you like TradingView, use TradingView. This is what I'm doing, this is what I'm showing you. I'm trying to give you the concept to understand that session, move, session beginning, false move. They'll take traders up, false move. They might end up going back long, but they're gonna come back and get the trader who's long here or long down here. They might come back and then go back before they do the measured move. That first half an hour in every 12 candle window will usually establish a high and a low. If they go outside of that high or low in that second hour, which is our equities hour, remember the concept. We saw this on gold yesterday. 
They, in London, they brought it up high for the sell-off in London. They only came down about 45 pips before they reversed it, but they brought everybody up high before they sold it. Okay, then in, and then in the New York Open, okay, they've done a squeeze. The Asian high and the London high low were inside of the Asia high low. That's a squeeze pattern. Eight hours, working it in three pushes, and then back, boom, an explosive move. But median price, okay, even if you look at your Asian session, if the market's traded down in Asia, okay, we use the green, traded down in Asia, and then as we head into London, we're working up top. That's a 50 pip box. I don't care if it's 25 and 75. Remember what I said to you before. They're gonna be trapping volume either inside of a quarter level or up top in a quarter level. But that's the median price. So if you're gonna be in a 50 pip box, this looks like a trend, but guess what? They're banging it into 25 before they come back at least 25, if not 50, to the low of the day. That's a box. This person up here wants to trade with the trend because their moving averages are up. Their MACD said it was going back up and they had a you know, uh, stochastic cross and an ABC and a MOUSE pattern. My, my point is this, even if you're in the direction of the trend, it could be a trending day, okay? If you are following this trend, they still might come back 25 to 50 pips before they resume that move. Nobody gets a free lunch. The only time you're going to get a free lunch is after they have done a creeping trend into a big squeeze. They've done a stop hunt like we saw in gold last night, double bull candle with pins and then a big bull pin hammer in the seven o'clock stop on hour, boom, breakout candle, another candle, and then into the 12 candle window for a measured move of what? Of our structure from the bigger rectangle. We're gonna review that on the chart, so don't get too caught up. I know there's a lot of traders who don't like my artwork. You can skip this part of the video. Okay, so median price very important because if you're buying you want to be either buying after they've moved it back and forth and they're coming off of the median price so let's so say you you missed the low of the day or the low of the session they came down they did a 25 pip stop hunt they come up and you think oh, I missed I missed the trade they're probably gonna come back and at least get this guy could be in three pushes whatever now again this is in the first half hour because timings are everything. If you're into the second hour, which is our equities hour, okay, so now they've painted a low and they've painted a high. If you're, if you're looking for a buy signal in the equities hour and you're inside, now you're buying inside. I'm talking about in that first hour when they've established a high and a low and they come back right away in the second 15 minutes, third 15 minutes max in that first hour, for a continuation move back with the trend off the median price. So we're talking bullpen, hammer, something that's got a buy signal after a second leg, one push, two push failure. But median price, again, if you're selling here, you sell here, second tap, you don't take any money. Next thing you know, you'll notice they usually come back fast. You're at break even or in a loss now. But if you bought here, they did a real quick little pin hammer or something and you bought, next thing you know it rolls over and they go down another 25 pips, now you're at least 25 pips underwater. That's usually enough for most traders to take the stop out and take a loss and then you watch it go back in the median direction. So median price is where they'll start in most cases and they'll either continue a move up 25 pips for a blow off or they'll come back into the trend for a stop hunt fake out and go up. Now in some cases as well, we might see that 50 pip move, that 50 pip box. They'll go up to that top box, but they may still be working the high for the sell off and the measured move back down. Simple concept, but more important to understand, we wanna be buying low or selling high in that 50 pip box. If you're not sure, don't trade it. But in most cases, you'll be able to see 
where the high and low are based on how the previous session has traded, whether that's the US session, the Asian session, or Asia London heading into the US. Asia heading into uh, London heading into the US is usually very obvious to see you're either in a, a three push pattern to a high, you're in a big rectangle, or you're in a squeeze for a big reversal going back the other way. Peak formations, okay, so again, when you see these. If that's Asia or that's London, they've gone outside of the box, whatever, we can make an assumption, okay, or a thesis that if they go down in Asia and they've come back up, that may be the low of the day. If they go up into the next, into London and they put a peak formation in for the stop on back down, that may be the high of the day. But those peak formations, once they form, and it will usually be by at least that second hour, so sometimes it'll be in that first hour. If they reverse the market in the first hour in Asia and come back above or below the higher low of the day, chances are that is gonna be the high or low for the entire day, especially if it is at the higher low of the week. Comes back to our Monday, Tuesday initial balance, narrow range day uh, for a big squeeze or a big move in the opposite direction, day two. So peak formations are very important. If you're not sure what they are, look for your one, two, threes, Always most important to me are high and low of the week, which again come back to Monday and Tuesday, sometimes Wednesday. We're going to talk about the example in gold this week because we had the thousand pip move. But as soon as you get a huge day like that or a huge candle on a chart, the next candles that form after that, I redraw the highs and lows. Tuesday, Wednesday became the high and low of the week. Thursday was an inside bar. Friday was a squeeze for a measured move back up through the highs of those redrawn highs and lows. One, two, three. So again, the difference between a creeping trend is that this is three pushes. We got a new marker here. Three pushes, okay? Over three hours usually, okay? So again, if you get into a 12 candle window and it's moving, it looks like it's trending and all of a sudden you get in there and for the next three hours it doesn't go anywhere, you gotta be thinking squeeze, okay? Squeeze. If you're not sure what a squeeze is, Google it. Those are coils that will have explosive moves, whether it's, if it's a continuation or a trend reversal, which again comes back to understanding what you're looking for in terms of price action and its behavior. Sometimes those pushes can be against the trend. So if it's a trend trade, we'll get three pushes against the trend like we saw in gold last night. If it's a reversal trade, we will get three pushes into a peak formation, whether it's down low and it's not going anywhere. So somebody again, who's in the money, somebody shorted the market, it's, they're short, they're in the market for three hours and it's only moved in a 25 pit box and you still really can't show any profit or get to break even without getting stopped out. You're in a major squeeze. And the longer that goes closer to the end of that 12 candle window into the gap time, you need to be paying attention. Because if you're in the wrong direction, that market is gonna go fast and hard against you. So one, two, threes will typically be near the end of the gap time, the stop on hour, or at the beginning of the 12 candle window. That is the one, two, three, the 45 minute stop hunt to a high or to a low, whether it's to the previous day's high or low, or to the high of the low of the day, the current day, high of the week, low of the week, whatever that may be. And in some cases, we may see that happen in the equities hour. We saw that last week on the British pound. One, two, three, four, one hour down, straight out of the consolidation, a one bar reversal, bang, back up 100 pips. So whenever they go outside or to a high or to a low, again, high or low of the week, or even more prominent, one, two, three, coming back to some simple concepts, understanding timings, 45 minutes, where are we in the 12 candle window? Because as we head into the equity hour, especially in the US session, that market is potentially now locking in a higher low for the day and for the session, and possibly now may have at least a 50 pip or more move back in the opposite direction. <clears throat> Entries, so people keep saying, where do we exactly do I get in though? I, I cannot spell this any clearer. And if you aren't sure, you need to print your charts off. If you aren't at the high or at the low, then you're inside. If you're inside, chances are you're not in a trade. 
most of these trades, the stop hunts out of creeping trends, whether that's a creeping trend from the end of the US into Asia for an explosive move, whether it's a trend into Asia for a creeper, then a stop hunt back at the end of the 12 candle window, consolidations, expansions, consolidations, expansions. I have said this from the beginning, I'm, I'm always looking for the opportunity where the market is coiled because that's where you can be in the market. I'm, I don't want to be at the screen for more than an hour. I really don't want to be at the screen and I've mastered that I think uh, to the point where when I'm done I just shut it down and I close my charts because I don't even, if it moves a hundred more pips I don't even care. Once my screen's off I'm not interested because I know that I could keep trading and I could end up giving some of that back. I've done that. I'm looking for scalable trades that are simple to see based on the timings because that coiled effect, that coiled market is preparing to make a fast strong move and in most cases it will be either a reversal stop hunt trade or a continuation trade. Gold was a continuation move last night but it was still a coiled market over an entire day. So again the concept of not so much about scalping pips but about getting into positions where the market is going to move fast and hard and I'm out of there in an hour and I got my 50 pips and I didn't have a lot of heat. I don't like stress. I don't like a lot of heat on my positions. I want to time the market as best I can, control my risk, have asymmetrical risk reward and be out of that market fast. I don't know how many times I've emphasized when you get caught into the, the moves that are outside of these windows and I'm not talking about after a squeeze is built up. I'm talking about trading other, other swings around these gap times and getting stuck in the market and sitting there for four hours when it hasn't gone anywhere. Wondering if you're going to take a loss, probably being sized up too big because you're scalping in and out and all of a sudden the market goes quiet because it's waiting for the, it's coiling volume in there and it's going to make a move. Now I think we've all been there but Again, getting your mindset to the point about targeting high possibility explosive trades for fast moves, taking the pips at size and locking it in, taking the money off the table and putting it in your bank account. So timing is everything. Timing, 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 algorithms, quants. Put your one minute chart up there and watch it take off as soon as the 12 candle window starts. Watch it for 30 minutes. You'll be amazed that all of a sudden it comes to life. Reinforcing the concept, which trade from the previous session, previous day, whatever that may be, who's in the money? Because if somebody goes long in Asia, guess where they're probably going in London if they haven't stopped them out? They're going to go back and at least hit them for break even, even if it's, if it's a, just a tap out. So measure that in your head. Where, where's the 50 pip boundary? Are they 50 pips away as London's opening up? Are they at double zeros? Are they at round numbers? Where, where would your fill need to be? If, if there are double zeros and somebody went long at 25 or, or say 50 in Asia and by the time that market creeps down and gives you an entry, that could be a trap because they might be filling you around 25 or 50 to take you to 25 but it's a spike and all of a sudden you get in short, you're short at 50, they spike it and pull it right back and it's still where you got in. Next thing you know, it's going right back against you. So you've got to be thinking what I'm talking about is if you're getting filled down low in a squeeze or if you're getting filled up high in a squeeze, you got to be thinking, especially as the timing window progresses, am I caught up high or down low in the wrong direction? So again, when these markets are putting in a peak formation for a reversal, they're going to be working the high, working the high. If they're working the low, they could be building that for a squeeze in the opposite direction. The stop hunts, the fast trades come out of coiled markets for explosive moves. So hopefully that makes sense. Most of these trades when they go will be over usually within an hour. Sometimes they're a bit longer but you have an idea as I've mentioned you should be able to be a break even in, mon in the money to some degree minimum after one hour and if I'm not I'm watching the clock because as, as that next hour ticks over especially if you're at the end of a window or near the beginning of a window, they may just be setting up a high and a low and they might you might be up 30 pips, next thing you know you're back at 5 pips. So pay attention to the clock, understand where your 50 pip box is. Just to talk about this, this week pound Canadian, pound Swiss, pound yen all gave fantastic trades. 
But again, my targeted three and specifically the gold, gold did not disappoint. This has been the biggest week since I've been trading gold, I think in terms of the amount of movement and the consistency. There's been other good, good days, but gold has just been uh, moving. Again, Pound Aussie had a textbook W formation for an explosive 50 pip move, but Pound Swiss, Pound CAD had some awesome trades this week. Uh, again, the main reason I've sort of been more focused on gold is that it moves. It moves every day, it moves every session. Coming back to the timing window, 15 minute candles, okay? Just gonna emphasize this, I keep getting asked about 12 hour candles. It's 12 candles, one hour before the equity markets, the equity market open that middle hour and the third hour. Doesn't matter to me what time they say Tokyo, Sydney opens up, whatever. I'm talking about New York time, okay? If you don't believe me, trade whatever time you want. I'm telling you, this is there's a, there are other trades, there are other timings. I'm just saying in terms of consistency, otherwise you're gonna be jumping on the screen randomly. I'm talking about the window, the golden window. One of the extremes will usually be established within that 12 candle window and there will be a move in that timing, New York Eastern Standard Time. Engulfments and pin hammers, one bar stop, okay, one ATR, not one ADR. One ADR is average daily range, okay? One ATR is true range, so if I'm talking about a 15 minute candle, the higher the low. If you're in near the high, it's gonna be 20, 20 pips max probably, 25 depending on the, the amount. Like sometimes gold, the candle will be bigger, but if I'm getting a, a best fill price near the numbers, I will look to a shorter time frame for a peak formation. But usually, typically, I know that if it goes more than 20 to 25 pips, there's something wrong. So I'll lock in a stop at 25 pips, especially if that is a third push pattern. Targeting minimum, 25, 50, 75, 100, 125 to 150. The reason why I put 25 there is that if you're in a trade for more than an hour and it's only gone 25 pips, I had a trade uh, in gold this week in Asia. Um, I, I wasn't quite an hour. Uh, I was pretty sure that I'd sold the high of the day, which it ended up being the high. It did move 50 pips, but after the one hour, I just took the 25. That's the decision I made. It moved 50, but at one hour, I just took the 25 because I wanted to be off the screen. And it was Asian. I thought, well, we've got two more sessions today. I'll take the 25. If you get 25 pips and, you know, half an hour or in 15 minutes, sometimes I'll just take that because when it moves that fast, chances are they're gonna come back that fast as well because they're making a high and a low now for that window inside of that next session. So it may not be the overall high and low, but they're making a high and low now for that session as the 12 candle window begins. Set Pre-setting your profit targets Sometimes you're gonna take 50 and it's gonna go 100. Sometimes you're gonna take 25 and it's gonna go 50. So what? You make a decision in live time. You take it, you, 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 I pre-program my stop and my profit target because as the trade evolves, it looks like it's gonna go more. You, you get a bit greedy, next thing you know, it comes back and you're, you're gonna get less. Make a decision in live time. It's a performance activity. It's a performance activity based on how you perform in live time, which comes back to some questions, back testing. You know, I talked about this, I had a podcast interview this week, we, we went into depth about edge and, and back testing. We could have the exact same entries and exits planned out and traders will still do all things completely different based on their own programming, their own aversion to risk, their lack of confidence, their overconfidence, their fear factor based on the price action, the impulse of the movement, the, the, the spreads flashing, all these little things, chasing movements. Live performance is what you're trying to train up here. It's repetition, 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 mental preparation, vision, being able to have a relaxed state of mind in terms of self-awareness, you know, read Randy Howell, uh, Mark Douglas, you know, confidence, all those things are kind of irrelevant unless you have an awareness of what you are doing in live time for peak formation, peak, uh, peak performance. How about peak formations too? So then again, just coming and constantly being aware of time and price. How long have I been in this trade? Is it behaving as it should behave? All, all of those little things. Learn to take a profit. I've talked about this in other videos. 
not taking money off the table. I heard Peter Brandt, call, re, re, I call it the around the world trade, he calls it the popcorn trade, where popcorn pops up and then comes back down. Being in a popcorn trade, you're in the money, you're in the money, you're in the money, and you don't take it off, and then it comes right back down. Next thing you know, you're at break even or with a loss. Don't do that. Take something off the table for your efforts. Get paid for performance. Even if it's 10 pips, take it. 10, 15, 25. We're targeting 50. But when you understand the right trades and you're patient and you wait for them, those are the ones you can put size on. You can scale those up. And when you're in that with size and in four bars, you're up 50 pips or 75 pips, that is a, an incredible feeling. That's like, like John Moulton said, it's like being on a comet. You're, you can't catch the tail, but you're riding it. And when, it's, when it goes that fast, bar after bar after bar, that is worth waiting for. And when you learn to wait for those, you don't get caught into all this other junk. I think that's the high, I think that's the low, I think that's, that, that's the trade. Master this stuff, print off your charts. This is gold, this is, this is gold. There's, there's so much opportunity here. When you realize that, you will do the work and you'll master some simple setups that are gonna show up. They're gonna be, they're, they're here every week. How many days? Years, years, 50 pips a day. There's gonna be 50 pips. I'm gonna say this, there'll be at least five 50 pip trades next week. 50 pip trades that have zero heat. They're gonna explode for a 50 pip movement. You could be piled in there with as much size as, as within your risk parameters, and it's done like that. But instead of chasing and scalping stuff, which comes back to a comment somebody said, why wouldn't you just do 10 five pip trades? I don't understand the rationale behind that. I wanna take one trade, which come, you know, the beginning of the video entry is the sniper. I want one trade, I'm waiting for that one trade and I'm gonna lock in on it. I'm gonna be patient and I'm gonna put size that's within my risk parameters and I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna put my stop in and my target and it's gonna do things and I've talked about just putting the orders in, the, uh, the stop and the profit target and walking away because there's nothing that I can do other than get myself out of a winner. If I've accepted that I'm gonna lose that much on the trade, when I get into the, Brent Penfold said this, write the loss down on paper and then be comfortable with that. If you're comfortable with it, then let the trade do what it's supposed to do. Accept the loss, become, an, become a, a master at losing and then you can succeed in trading. Peter Brandt said it, become a great loser, you can succeed in trading. It's the losses that will cause you to blow up, but also you getting out of winning trades will prevent you from achieving the levels of success that you can. So let's look at some of the best trades from this week. I'm gonna probably focus a bit more on the trades that I took with gold, but there was some fantastic opportunities on all of these pairs this week. Thank you again for a ton of great feedback patience, comments, everything. I know that some traders have just completely nailed this and congratulations, keep it going. One good trade, one good trade at a time. Master the trade, keep getting better. Have a great trading week next week and uh, enjoy your weekend. Thank you again for the hitting the like button and turning on your notifications. We'll talk soon, let's look at the charts. So a great example on the pound Canadian this week of a creeping trend. So we again into the U.S. session rollover. They came up 50 pips from the low. They put a peak formation in place into the rollover. So again, we, we just work from the simple concept. Are they putting a high of the day in place? Are they putting a low of the day in place? They went up. They went up again in the 12 candle window. They form a peak formation. They come down one, two, three. They go back up again, but they don't take out the high. They work in sideways heading into the 12 candle window without taking out the high of the day. But we have a low and we have a high. So they're working the high, working the high, working the high. But now we get a market that if traders have shorted this, they short the market and we come down in one push consolidation, two pushes consolidation and then we blow off in a one two three creeping trend down okay creeper is a market that takes its time it's moving it's going it's a trending market but it's a creeping trend drops down pulls back consolidates drops down pulls back drops down pulls back drops down pulls back and then one two three so a 33 
to end a move. They go into consolidation. They pin, bear pin, bull candle, bear pin, sideways consolidation. The bull candle engulfs the low bear. We get an engulfment at the 12 candle window. So creeping trend. This is a squeeze setup for a fast explosive stop hunt back through the high of the day. Traders are trend trading this down low. Lower level shorts get creamed one bar. Concept now of understanding when this one bar closes, all of these bear candles are now trapped. All of this volume after one candle is trapped. And then understanding that if this market is going to be a stop hunt after a squeeze, all this, this is six, six hours, six hours of, of trading volume. But if they come back down inside of this, they allow traders who are now underwater to get out with either a smaller loss, break even, whatever that may be. So the thesis is that when this is a squeeze, this should go one, two, three, four, at least to the high of the day, one hour. And again, they take out the high of the day, consolidate a two bar consolidation with a pin on top into the third hour. This is the end of the equities hour on this small bear candle. This is almost the same as an engulfment. They've taken shorts in and pulled back. This little pin on top of the first candle of the third hour is heat on traders who have entered in at the close. And then fast move back down. One, two, three, four. 50 up, 50, 75 up, 50 down. And stopping out traders who are in the money. But again, creeping trend, creeping trend. This market started its move into the second candle of the 12 candle window and reversed on the second candle of the 12 candle window. That's six hours for a fast move up and a fast move down. So gold provided a lot of opportunities this week. And again, just coming back to the beginning of the week, we had the massive big move down. And whenever we get a market that goes completely out of balance like this, the first thing I do is I reset myself for the week. I reset my high and low configurations. We've got our low of the week, obviously, but the next day we were working up. They put a high in place and they continue to extend that high into the Europe 12 candle window. They pulled it back and they go up a second time to round numbers before going into consolidation. So again, the concept of the high bull candle or the low bear candle, they engulf the high bull candle and reverse the market. They've moved this market up 200 pips. We can expect at least a 50 pip stop hunt back against the trend. This market dropped down 100 plus pips. But again, the creeper up, putting the high of the day in place. They're working up. Trend, all trend indicators would be dragging traders following this move. They chase the swing. So again, the psychology behind something like this. Traders get in long at the London Open. It goes into consolidation. This one bar that takes out the low, there's your one bar stop, 20 pips. The market breaks out. This should be a fast move. Why? Because they've got all this volume now trapped above in that upper 50 pip box. We've got volume. This market does exactly as it's supposed to. Drops down, pins through, pulls back, and continues down to get the trader from the Asian session who's in the money. Nobody gets a free lunch. Who's in the money? Creeping trend up, fast move down. A different variation, same concept. But we redraw our high. We have our low of the week and our high of the week. The next day, again, we extend our redrawn highs and lows because we're in a box. We're in a box. Now we're inside of the peak formations. All of this price action in the U.S. session is inside. So if you want to get caught into chop, trade inside of the highs and lows because as we see you can be chasing moves back and forth getting whipsawed they work uh, they put a high of the day in place inside and they work it in three pushes consolidation drop it back down work it down in three pushes pull it back inside so now we have an inside peak formation inside of the peak formation they work it back up into the high before dropping it down Creeper down again, we're inside, they're jamming everybody in. The tighter this gets, the bigger the move you can expect. Inside of the peak, 
inside of the peak until it finally breaks down. Consolidation for a fast move down through the low of that upper border rectangle, which again, coming back to our structure, was a full expansion of this last rectangular range that the market broke out of. Creeping trend down, one push down. They put a low of the day in place. We get a creeper down, creeper down, creeper down. Three pushes down, consolidation. They pop it up above. So again, we have a rectangle. Can put our rectangle down for a possible measured move in the next session. We This market comes down in the Europe 12 candle window to stop hunt down before pulling back, giving us our W structure in the 12 candle window. Consolidation engulfment so we get one push two pushes three pushes down consolidation continuation of that move back up for a full expansion to the double zeros before pulling back and going into consolidation so creeping trend creeping trends will end the move whether it's a capitulation in the direction of the trend or a reversal now this market didn't squeeze but it ended the trend we had a a creeping trend down, it ended in three pushes, it went into consolidation, popped above the structure, our geometrical rectangle, worked down into that three pushes before reversing, consolidating, and continuing that move. Friday is a great example of, uh, again, looking at price in a box. We have our sell in the uh, U.S. session, sell set, set up high. They come down put in a low of the day, and they work it in three pushes. One push, two pushes, three pushes down before engulfing, heading into our 12 candle window to complete the second half of that move, which was a stop hunt on traders that were short. They go into consolidation at the double zeros for the stop hunt back down to traders who were long, work it a second time before pulling back inside and working up in three pushes, before again stop hunting back down creeping trend one push two push three pushes stop on low pull it back three pushes against the long trade so traders are long one push two pushes three pushes consolidation bullpen engulfment breakout candle above the London high explosive move outside of the previous day's high consolidation another bullpen hammer for the continuation move in the direction of the U.S. Session 12 candle window for a measured move. So again, one bar stop. A one bar stop at the beginning of the session. This is not a stop hunt. This is a breakout. A stop hunt breaks out and pulls back. This is a breakout, consolidation, continuation, engulfment in the equities hour, second candle. So again, you're in a strongly moving market. This market drops down 50 pips from top to bottom in one hour. Against a, This is a stop on a vertical move. You can expect a second pullback against that breakout. If we were a creeping trend, we could expect the fast move. But now we expect this market to possibly go into a second leg or a creeping trend itself. So at the end of that hour, potentially take money, especially when it goes into consolidation, be exiting, break even, or taking money off the table if you haven't already taken 30 to 50 pips in that first leg back down. Again, this came back to traders who got in at the beginning of the 12 candle window. First candle breakout trade, they're in the market. They now stopped out at break even. There's the popcorn trade. And we also possibly now have a peak formation high in place. They go one, two, three back up into traders that are short. Consolidation, sideways, 50 pip move back down through the middle structure for traders who chase that second leg back up on the one, two, three. Creeping trends. If we looked at the pound yen, again, another example where the market dropped down 50 pips through the previous day's low. They worked the low in three pushes. They put a middle structure in place after the second leg down. Third leg engulfment sideways breaks out of the middle structure, pulls back in one, two, three, engulfment, continuation into the 12 candle window one push two pushes and a third push to the high on a one two three to round numbers to 50 150 pip move up sorry 100 pip move up from 50 to 50 before taking out the high bull okay so again 
three pushes ends the move. Doesn't have to be a creeper. We had a creeper down, creeper down, creeper down, breakout pullback, explosive move back through the high. Three pushes up, engulfment, consolidation, and again an example where this bear candle trapped all this bull candle closes. Everybody who chased this move long was caught in one candle, sideways, and then the fast move down. Stop hunting traders who were long at the beginning of the session. Consolidation, continuation to get the traders who are long in Asia. So again, another example over the course of the session of the day, popcorn trade all the way up, all the way down. Nobody gets a free lunch. Take money off the table. Three pushes, one, two, threes, and creeping trends. One push, two pushes, three pushes down for pulling back. One push, two push, three pushes, ending the session and the week. Hopefully you got some value out of today's video, traders. Creeping trends, when there are squeezes, consolidations will often end in very fast, explosive moves, especially in the timing window. Also, they will possibly, three pushes extended out will end a move. So again, even timing-wise, three hours, one push, two push, three push, consolidation, we get another three-hour continuation. Fast moves will often end a capitulating or a, a creeping trend. Have a great weekend. Stay disciplined, stay focused, keep getting better, and may the markets Hi, go. Hi, traders. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.